May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So this morning, I want to take you back in time, longer ago for some of us than others, to when you were in school and you had to write a book report and present it to the class. Because this morning, my sermon is going to be in the spirit of a book report on this book, which is called A Year of Biblical Womanhood by Rachel Held Evans. The subtitle is How a Liberated Woman Found Herself Sitting on Her Roof, Covering Her Head, and Calling Her Husband Master. And this book has a very, very simple premise. Rachel, who was in her late 20s at the time, living in the very fundamentalist, conservative Bible Belt in the USA, decided to spend a year taking as literally as possible every Bible text about women. And at the same time, she would research existing scholarship about these texts and what they really mean And she would interview women from traditions that take them literally. During this year, in this spirit of extreme literalism, Rachel took on household responsibilities like sewing and dressmaking. She slept outside in a tent when she was menstruating. She sat on the roof of her house after an argument with her husband, Dan. And she stood at the outskirts of their town during rush hour, holding a sign that said, Dan is awesome. (laughs) Now, when I first heard about this book, I thought it sounded terrible. I had spent my life in an evangelical tradition, not as conservative as Rachel's, but one that too often took the Bible out of context and interpreted texts literally in ways that limited women's roles. By choosing to live for a year as if these ancient texts should apply literally to modern women, I thought that Rachel was playing straight into the hands of fundamentalists who would love to force women to conform to some kind of mythical, biblical worldview that's actually based a lot more on suburban stereotypes from the 1950s. I had loved all of Rachel's other books. The way that she questioned and ultimately deconstructed the very conservative faith she grew up in. It was very similar to the journey that I had already been on in leaving the evangelical church and discovering a whole world of Christian faith that was wider and deeper and freer than I could ever have imagined. And when I finally read this book, it was a wonderful experience. Rachel's writing is hilariously funny. She's curious about and yet gracious to people that she disagrees with. And she wrestles deeply with the abuses and oppression of women throughout history that have been justified by twisting our sacred text. And a whole chapter of this book is devoted to the person we met in our first reading today, the Proverbs 31 woman. A capable wife who can find, begins Proverbs 31, verse 10. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She makes her arms strong. I guess they have to be strong to plant a vineyard. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable her lamp does not go out at night, so she gets up while it is still night, but then she also somehow seems to work all night. Her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out to the needy. 
She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes garments and sells them. Strength and dignity are her clothing. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks to the way of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Rachel Held Evans said that she knew she had to devote an entire month of her year-long project to the text that we read this morning because it looms so large in the lives of so many Christian women. In fact, Rachel says that in the Bible Belt culture, there are three people a young girl has got to know. One, Jesus. Two, Ronald Reagan. And three, the Proverbs 31 woman. And while the first two are thought to embody God's ideal for all mankind, the third is thought to represent God's ideal for women. (laughs) At every conservative women's conference, you will hear the Proverbs 31 woman lauded from the podium. In every Christian bookshop, you will find entire women's sections devoted to books that extol her virtues and make them applicable to modern wives. Rachel says that the Proverbs 31 woman is the evangelicals Mary, venerated, idealized, and yet expected to show up in every man's kitchen at dinner time. Only unlike Mary, there is no indication that the Proverbs 31 woman ever actually existed. Instead, Proverbs 31 is a poem or a song written in the genre of royal instruction, which was a familiar genre in ancient Near East literature. It is advice given to a young ruler, King Lemuel, by his mother. So the woman behind Proverbs 31, the author, is not a dutiful wife, but an instructive queen mother, whose advice to the future king demonstrates an interest in social policy that suggests she had significant influence. And no one knows for sure the identity of King Lemuel or his mother But in rabbinic tradition, Lemuel is a pseudonym for Solomon, which would make the author of Proverbs 31, Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, wife of King David, a woman who had herself suffered abuse at the hands of a so-called godly man. And Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 31, is a 22-line acrostic poem. What that means is that the first word of each verse starts with the next consecutive letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which of course is completely lost to those of us who've only ever read it in translation. This poem sings the praise of obviously a very upper class woman who keeps her household functioning by buying, trading, investing, planting, sewing, weaving, managing servants, extending charity, providing food for the family, and preparing for each season. The new revised standard version of the Bible, which is what we heard read this morning, begins, a capable wife who can find... The Hebrew words that have been translated for us as capable wife, in Hebrew, it is eshet chayil. But they have been translated into English very, very differently in different versions of the Bible. Here are some examples. A good wife, an excellent wife, a wife of noble character, a valiant woman, a worthy woman, 
a capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman. But most scholars today think that the best translation of these words is valorous woman, a woman of valor. And that's because the structure of this poem very closely resembles a heroic poem that celebrates the exploits of a warrior, a, a, val, a valorous person. The Old Testament scholar Ellen Davis says that this poem was intended to demonstrate the importance of women's skilled work in a household-based economy. And it should not be used to compare the Proverbs 31 woman with a housewife or a modern businesswoman. Anyone who has even the smallest understanding of the importance of genre should know that an ancient poem is not meant to be taken literally as a commandment or a task list for women today. And yet, many, many Christians interpret this poem as a command to women rather than an ode to women. With the homemaking activities of the Proverbs 31 woman lauded as the ideal for all women. This misunderstanding of genre and misinterpretation of intent has been weaponized throughout history to limit the options and the agency of women. And these kinds of views are currently seeing a resurgence in right-wing political circles with the rise of the so-called trad wife on social media and the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025, which among many other things, seeks to limit women's access to reproductive health and promote marriage, family, and children as the key to a good life. Somehow, a song of praise to the strength and valor of women has been twisted into an impossible ideal that Christian women are expected to conform to. In this book project, as Rachel learned more about the genre, intent, and translations of Proverbs 31, she began to see the text very differently as a celebration of women. And she started to use it in her daily life. When her sister got her dream job, Rachel shouted, Ashet Hail, woman of valor. Women who read this book, who read Rachel's blog, began to use it for each other. When one went on national television to speak out against abuse in fundamentalist churches, Ashet Hail, woman of valor. They used it for each other in response to promotions, pregnancies, finished projects, final cancer treatments, woman of valor. Rachel helped many women to reclaim the Proverbs 31 woman, to understand that she's not some mythical, ideal, or impossible standard. She exists in all of us. When we do even the smallest things with valor. Now, as you might expect, this book, and indeed all of Rachel's books and most of her blog posts, received a lot of backlash and criticism from conservative Christians. She often received hate mail, telling her that she was leading people to hell. However she might have felt inside, Rachel always responded to these attacks with incredible courage and graciousness. 
But I'm sorry to have to tell you this morning, some of you may already know this, that this story takes a tragic turn. Rachel Held Evans died suddenly and unexpectedly in 2019. She was admitted to hospital with flu-like symptoms, which progressed very quickly to brain seizures, and she was placed into an induced coma from which she never recovered. She was 37. As tributes poured in from thousands of readers around the world, most of them used the words Eshet Ha'il. And on Rachel's gravestone, it simply says, Rachel Held Evans, Woman of Valor. So I will leave you today with Rachel's own words from the end of her chapter about Proverbs 31. I suppose the moral of this story is that trying to copy another woman, even a woman from the Bible, is a bad idea. As Judy Garland said, be a first-rate version of yourself, not a second-rate version of someone else. The Proverbs 31 woman is praised not because of what she does, but how she does it, with valor. So do your thing. Whatever you find yourself doing, do it with valor. Take risks. Make mistakes. Get up the next morning and surround yourself with people who will cheer you on. Amen.